Welcome back to Boom and Bust. I'm your host, Tony Clement, having a conversation with Francis Bradley. He is the president and CEO of Electricity Canada. Sorry, I had to cut you off there before the break, but please continue with your thoughts on uh, these new regulations. Sure. Yeah. The last point I wanted to make is, um, you know, uh, one of one of you know our, our fundamental uh, concerns here is we want to make sure, and this is something that we share with a lot of uh, a lot of stakeholders in this. We want to make sure that the uh, uh, regulations uh, that are put into force uh, are durable. Uh, that they they are something that that we can actually meet. That the industry can deliver upon. That regulators can regulate to. Uh, so we want to make sure that the, the, that these regs are something that will actually actually work and actually deliver upon the system. So it isn't a matter of you know we're 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 just simply opposed because we want to be opposed to it. Uh, we're putting together constructive criticism um, as one does uh, in this kind of a process because uh, you know it's it's in our interest and it's in everybody's interest to make sure that whatever the final form of these regs uh, regulations are. Uh, that they deliver not only upon the objective of having a clean electricity system, but they deliver it in a manner that is reliable uh, and in a manner that uh, is affordable for customers. Because we have to have all three of those things uh, in in place. Otherwise, uh, you know, we, we will fail. Uh, so, uh, yes, it needs to be clean, certainly, but it's got to be affordable for customers. And we cannot uh, let reliability uh, uh, down in, in any circumstance. Let's talk about affordability for a, a little bit as well, because uh, I believe you've indicated that you think that the uh, costs associated with the clean electricity regulations are underestimated. Uh, maybe get, get into a bit of detail on that. Yeah, uh, and and again, that's you know a, a part of the, the detail uh, um, when you, when you look at uh, all of the all of the materials that are put together and that are supporting this regulation. It comes back to a fundamental concern that we have with respect to affordability. Now, I know there there have been a number of, of stakeholders uh, and and groups and think tanks that have that have weighed in on this. Uh, uh, you know, the Canadian Climate Institute uh, is is one of them that has, they suggest that the Total energy bill uh, that the, uh, that a customer will pay when you go to 2050 will be you know the same or or less when taken as a whole, uh, and that may be when we get up to 2050 because we'll be spending less presumably on 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 fossil fuels and and but more on electricity. Um, but we're concerned absolutely in terms of what the direct impact is going to be on customers, particularly uh, the most vulnerable customers. And so we, we need to be cognizant of, of rate shock. Um, and, um, you know, we, we want to make sure that the, that these regulations or any other actions, frankly, that are taken by, by any governments do not uh, negatively impact the customer to such a degree that uh, it makes them have to make choices about, um, uh, you know, electricity versus uh, versus food on the table. Sure, sure. That's that's what uh, everybody's uh, concerned about. I, I, I expect that. Can you um, can you expand on another aspect of this, uh, which is the job needed to be done to retrofit our power grids? That's that's also something that people are talking about. Yeah, and there's kind of two 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 steps in this. I mentioned earlier that. Uh, we have uh, aspirations for a net zero electricity grid by 2035 and aspirations for uh, a net zero economy by 2050. Right. And so that brings two uh, uh, two objectives into play. One is how do we, as you, the term you use there is retrofit, like how do we take the existing system and make the existing system um, uh, non-emitting uh, as much as possible? Uh, and so that's the first piece. And then the second piece is then how do we grow it to meet uh, that demand uh, as it increases? And for both of those, particularly uh, with respect to the first one, I mean, we're starting from a really good place here. You know, I'm I'm at a, um, an international conference right now uh, in Quebec City, but there's you know people here from uh, the United States and and, uh, and from overseas. And, you know, when we talk about our challenges with respect to reducing GHG emissions in the electricity sector, uh, people in other countries wish they had, uh, you know, our starting point. Eighty-four percent of the electricity we produce today uh, is is non-emitting. Right. That last sixteen percent, retrofitting basically the system to be able to hit that last sixteen percent, is definitely a, a, a very significant challenge. And then the the challenge beyond that, um, you know, if 
we look at the projections for what does a, a net zero economy wide look like out to 2050, we're looking at a doubling to tripling uh, of uh, the electricity system is going to be required to achieve that. So we're talking about a lot of growth, um, but we're talking about a lot of growth uh, in a sector where it's very difficult to get things built. Right, It's a real right. challenge. And you'll remember that from 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 your days on the Hill. Um, exactly. There was a lot of discussions around this. Um but yeah, it is it is just simply very complicated to to get anything uh, to get anything moved forward and built in this country. It just takes time. We're going to take another break, sir. We'll be back with you after these commercials. Please stay with us.